Shalom, shalom, family, and welcome to our channel, Manna for Battle, where we literally eat spiritual food provided by Yahuwah. And if the food you're eating doesn't look right, doesn't smell right, or doesn't taste right, then most likely you're eating at the wrong table. Join us and eat the spiritual manna straight from Yahuwah that will nourish your earthly body, lead you to Yeshua, who will take you straight to the Heavenly Father and your celestial one. Now let's prepare for battle. Shalom family and welcome to our channel. Hear the words of the Most High in Amos chapter 9 verse 7 in part. Are you not as the children of the Ethiopians unto me, O children of Israel, says the Most High. This verse suggests there is some type of connection between Israel and the Ethiopian. But before we begin this search, remember, people were divided by nations, not the color of a crayon. With that being said, some may not know that King Solomon, an Israelite, and Queen Sheba, who is known as Makeda, a Hamite, an Ethiopian, allegedly had a son. He was called King Menelik I, but his original name was Ebna Lahakim, which means son of the wise. His original name, in my opinion, verifies his connection to King Solomon, the wisest man of this earth. Here is a picture of King Menelik I, but many pictures today depict this king as a modern-day Arabian. It never ceased to amaze me that many people can accept the Ethiopians or so-called black people, but not the Israelites. Hmm. Consider this. One can trace Emperor Haile Selassie's lineage all the way back to King Solomon, but never consider that his ancient ancestor was a so-called black man, an Israelite. But wait, how can we know this for sure about King Solomon? Because King Solomon was from the house of Jacob, and Jacob's face would never wax pale, though we all are a speckled bird. Hear the words of the Most High in Isaiah chapter 29, verse 22. Therefore, thus saith the Most High, who redeemed Abraham, concerning the house of Jacob, Jacob shall not now be ashamed, neither shall his face now wax pale. Note, it states his face. But let's search deeper with a closer look at the biblical use for the word pale, to be white grow white, grow pale. You see that? Let's search a little deeper in the Hebrew Chaldee lexicon about this verse. To be white, to become pale, or to be bleached. This is extremely important when identifying Israel because the whole house of Jacob, the entire nation, would never be all pale faces. You see that? But back to the battle. The connection between the Israelites and the Ethiopian, in my opinion, is not so much about the color of their skin, but their common bloodline ancestor, King Solomon. And for the ones that are aware of this, yet fail to help or support their brethren, their kin, repent, because the Most High has prophesied destruction for Ethiopia. Hear the words of the Most High in Ezekiel chapter 30, verse 3 through 5. For the day is near, even the day of the Most High is near, a cloudy day. It shall be the time of the heathen, and the sword shall come upon Egypt, and great pain shall be in Ethiopia, when the slain shall fall in Egypt, and they shall take away her multitude, and her foundations shall be broken down, Ethiopia, and Libya, and Lydia, and all the mingled people and chub and the men of the land that is in Lee shall fall with them by the sword. All praises to the Most High. Now, let me share this one last thing off subject. Abraham Lincoln knew we were Jews. I'm going to say that again. Abraham Lincoln knew we were Jews, but that's for another lesson. And this 
It's just manna for thought. Shalom, family, and thank you. Family, I pray this lesson has edified your soul and spirit and brings you peace. Always, always, always seek Yah first and pray without ceasing. Remember, John chapter 4, verse 23 and 24. But the hour cometh, and now it is, when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship Him. And be sure to subscribe and click the bell to be notified of my next video. Thank you.